Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. This evening, Raila Odinga was at some live televised interview. And he made some remarks, remarks that seems to be causing confusion amongst Kenyans and more so amongst Raila supporters. Listen to this before we proceed. Come Monday, Odinga says, Azimio supporters will troop to the city and other major towns with a petition for various government offices. For Nairobi, the destination will be the office of the president. We will hand a position to the president wherever he is. If he's in the office of the president, we'll take it there. If he's in state house, we'll take it there. So if he's at state house, you'll, you'll walk to state house? We'll, but, but peacefully. And only two, two or three people will, will, will walk inside to go and present the petition. Odinga, state house is a protected area. How do you plan to gain access without an appointment? But the apartment is, is on notice. We can paste it at the gate of the state house. And we just, we just paste it there, we hand it over to the guard who will be there. If the president will not want to receive it. But if he opens the gate, we'll go and take it to him, to, to him ourselves. What Sahel Odinga saying, and what's the game plan here? In fact, having listened, to the entire speech, I'm seeing Raila Odinga, who is still just giving William Ruto more time to fulfill on the demands Azimio has laid on the table. And from the demands, I'm seeing Raila Odinga, who has summarized them into three. The first demand is for William Ruto to lower the cost of living. The second demand is for William Ruto to open the servers. And the third demand is for William Ruto and his team to stop single-handedly reconstituting IEBC. Those are the main demands. I'm seeing Raila Odinga is still laying on the table for William Ruto to fulfill. And if you look at all those demands, those are things that Kenyans are also asking. Yes, Kenyans are also requesting William Ruto to fulfill those demands. The cost of living is going up for everybody. Whether you voted for William Ruto or not, Kenyans are feeling the pain and we have been seeing protests across the country. Areas that voted for William Ruto and even areas that never voted for William Ruto. Kenyans are suffering. Kenyans are not satisfied on the way William Ruto is ruling the country. So when Dayo Odinga talks about the high cost of living, that's something touching Kenyans across board. When Dayo Odinga tells William Ruto to open the servers, I, I honestly believe that a good majority of Kenyans also want to know exactly what happened on August, mm -hmm. because it's not all that prudent for a Kenyan to wake up in the morning, you go cast your vote, and then your vote does not count. So that's also an issue touching on a good majority of Kenyans. And then there is the issue of the reconstitution of IEBC. The moment William Ruto and his team single-handedly reconstitutes IBC, then it will make a mockery of Kenya's democracy in terms of election, or rather in terms of voting. Because now Kenyans will be wasting their time going to vote while already IBC itself has preferred candidates to win. So those are issues that are touching, or those are issues that Kenyans are also raising. So if you listen to Raila Odinga again, I'm seeing Raila Odinga who is clearly outsmarting William Ruto. Only that William Ruto might not be seeing it, but from Raila's
strategy I'm seeing a Raila Odinga who is clearly outsmarting William Ruto. A revolution that does not take place in one day. And even if you look at the recent revolution we saw in Sri Lanka, it took about three months. Three months of intensive protest demonstrations, police brutality, until eventually the president Gotabaya was actually evicted. So it's not something that just happens in a single day. But you just tore maybe state house and then there you have you remove the president. I strongly believe it's something that it's a process. It's a process that builds. And from the look of things, that process is going to start building commanding. Because I'm very sure that William Ruto, looking at William Ruto and his team, they might be misadvised to interfere with the with the Monday's demonstrations. And the moment they interfere, then I know that there is going to be some clashes between the civilians or the protesters and the police. And that's going to be the, the beginning of a real revolution. As things are right now, it has not properly started. And I'm very sure that even Kamande, even if Rail Odinga was to lead his team to State House, it, in my honest opinion, it's not, it cannot achieve much in that Kenyans have not been psyched enough. Mm. We must, first of all, see some running battles, some police brutality, for those things to help in building emotions and tensions. So maybe Monday can be the, be, be the beginning of that. And also listening to Raila Odinga, he also made it very clear that their demonstrations are not starting or ending on Monday, but it will be a process. And just as Raila Odinga explained, that the three in the, one or two or three people will present a petition to William Ruto. And as usual, from the look of things, William Ruto, through maybe wrong advice, can ignore hey, those who will be presenting the petition. And Raila has also made it very clear that should Ruto and his team ignore that, then they will pin the petition on the gate. I honestly believe that William Ruto ignoring the petition will just help in building momentum. And with or without Raila Odinga ordering his supporters or Kenyans to storm state house, as long as things continue the way they are going, as long as the cost of living is still going up, as long as we are still seeing only two tribes being given jobs and being given appointments in this government, Kenyans will still rebel. As long as we are seeing a bloated government, a government oppressing the poor, a government pushing Kenyans to the wall in terms of taxes, Kenyans will still rebel against William Ruto. Even if it will not be on Monday, that day will surely come and I'm saying that with a lot of confidence. And just as I've been saying, this revolution of this mass action is not about Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga is just trying to carry the spirit of the many suffering Kenyans. So uh, in the event Raila Odinga fails, then that's not Raila Odinga failing, is, is the Kenyans, or rather it's Kenyans who are actually failing. So for Kenyans to make sure they don't fail, I honestly believe that Kenyans them, themselves should now own this process. If Raila Odinga does not necessarily need to tell them maybe to storm state house. But the people themselves can decide to storm state house. And I honestly believe that Raila is cleverly trying to let the people themselves take charge of the revolution. Raila has told them to come to the city which is good in him that he has mobilized them. So it's up to the people themselves now to proceed from there. Raila Odinga does not necessarily have to tell them that now we are storming maybe state house. It's the people themselves to decide. And that's how our revolution actually succeeds. It's the people to decide. And I'm very sure that even that Monday, should the people decide 
that we are storming state house, Rail Odinga will have no control or we cannot stop them. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. But in case you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. To our fans and subscribers, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you're giving me here. God bless you, God bless Kenya. Any other person who wants to support our forum, I've pinned my number on the comment section. Contact me through the number or feel free to channel your support to the number. And to those saying that maybe Raila has disappointed his supporters or Raila disappointed Kenyans, those are people who are living in denial. Raila Odinga has not stopped anybody from storming state house. It's the people themselves to take charge, not Raila Odinga telling them. Let's meet in our next analysis.